right, so Cliff, welcome to Nurse Jessica's Sites. I'm excited to have you here. Um, I came across what is going on currently in your life on a uh, Facebook newsfeed. And I was very interested in your story because I felt compelled after reading it. Well, for one, great to be on the show. And um, uh, yes, I was uh, I'm a nurse. Cliff, Cliff Willman, right? Am I saying that right? Willman, Willman, you got it. You got it perfect. Yeah. Okay. I've been a nurse for 13 years. I, 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 you know, came out of the Chicago area. Um, I worked primarily ER, but also ICU and even did some primary care for a, a couple of years at Kaiser Permanente in Colorado. Um, my family and I are new um, residents of Minnesota. We just moved here about a year and a half ago. Uh, and yeah, uh, I was uh, hired by United Hospital uh, in October of 2019, uh, which is a union hospital, which is, uh, I was really excited about it. It was nice to get back into the ER. And um, that was three or four months before the COVID-19 pandemic hit the United States. Okay. So, you know, in those early days, uh, we were doing all we could to learn about what we were about to be uh, dealing with. And we were nervous and anxious, as most nurses and doctors were across the country. Uh, we did the best we could to uh, do the research to make sure that our patients were protected and that, you know, our coworkers protected. And of course, you know, I'm a father of two, so I was nervous about yeah bringing COVID-19 home to my family because, I mean, that would just be a disaster. Uh, so we took on all kinds of measures in the beginning of, of that, uh, of the pandemic. It was clear to us as it is to so many uh, medical workers out there that the hospitals were completely unprepared for this. Oh, yeah. um, and the response was disorganized, top heavy, and um, sometimes chaotic and dangerous. That's the way we felt about it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we took on all kinds of issues from, you know, PPE, like everybody else was doing, to patient flow, to protocol and policy. Um, and then of course, you know, educating ourselves on how things, you know, work with, with COVID-19, which was very new to everybody. And, uh, you know, really during the course of that, the administration of United Hospital, uh, responded uh, most times totally vacantly and oftentimes, uh, you know, hostily. And the more we were concerned, the more nervous we became, uh, the more uh, we saw breaches in what we commonly understand about infection control and patient safety. Uh, it seemed like it became like a real competition between those of us that were doing the patient care and, you know, those executive level administrators that are making a lot of money off of this industry. And um, it's kind of weird the way it, it broke down. But um, for myself, I, I, you know, I said that, look, we're getting exposed to COVID-19 from patients. Um, I suggested that it could be spread by asymptomatic patients that come in for CVAs or, I mean, just anything. If, if we're going into patient rooms and we're wearing our personal scrubs and we don't know that these patients are positive for COVID-19, it's plausible that this could be transmitted. Uh, they call it fomite transmission, which is, you know, on, on surface areas or, you know, whatever it could be. That's why we wear the gowns. And I was concerned that we were going to, I was going to take it home to my family. Like what, what was the, what were you getting back from admin at that point when you were giving these suggestions and these ideas about asymptomatic transition, transmission and that kind of stuff? Well, we got a lot of signs that said that we were heroes and we got a lot of signs that said, thank you. And we had mm -hmm. a, a tremendous amount of lip service okay. uh, paid to us. And that unfortunately did not translate into um, any inclusion of frontline healthcare workers in the incident command, where all of the major uh, decisions were being made, uh, where all the communication was taking place. And really with the scrubs, I was told by our in infection prevention specialist, her name is Cindy Larson, still working at United Today, um, that COVID-19 is not really viable on scrubs. That's what she said. And after, you know, a month's or th weeks worth of, 
of review of the medical documentation in, a, in an article by the New England Journal of Medicine that said that COVID-19 is can be viable on surface areas for up to 72 hours or right. more. Right. Um, I was blown away. I just, I, I didn't even know what to say about that. And, you know, with the scrubs, I mean, that's really kind of a minor issue. We, we had already closed up uh, same day surgeries and, and elective surgeries. So th there was hospital scrubs all over the hospital and the doctors and the PAs in the ER wear these scrubs every day. And um, so they're sitting on a, on a rack at United Hospital. They're sitting there right now. And um, so we, you know, the, the minor request for these things, you know, felt like kind of minutia at the time. And it was, it was rejected. It was um, the the concern was denied. I mean, just absolutely denied right out of the box. I mean, one of my union reps there at the hospital said that speaking to Janet Pestel, our CNO, uh, was like talking to a brick wall. So, you know, I, I guess I didn't know what to do. A lot of my coworkers didn't know what to do. I've had some experience in, in union activism and workplace activism. And you were wearing them at the time though, correct? Like you started wearing them, like you were like, okay, this is a, obviously a no brainer. Like I can wear these and then change back into normal clothes. So I kind of doing a favor, like it's less, I, I would think the less chance of transmission, like, okay, this is kind of obvious. So right. were you already starting to wear them or were you waiting for the okay that yes, you can wear them? We, we asked permission, it was denied. Okay. Um, and this was going on about all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was just clear to me that the, that the hospital was completely flat footed on, on the, the response to this pandemic. Did I read this right or did I read this wrong that there's a sister hospital that allows the nurses to wear hospital scrubs or is that something I read incorrectly? Uh, Alina Health is um, it's the umbrella hospital group here and their flagship hospital, Abbott Northwestern, which is in uh, downtown Minneapolis, one of the largest hospitals in Minnesota. Um, all of their all of their nurses uh, were given a hospital issued scrubs. Um, the, I mean, they're just a couple miles from us. And then you know the other major hospital system, L M Health Fairview. I mean, they opened it like they turned an entire hospital into a COVID nineteen concentrated facility, and the, the nurses there were prohibited from uh, using their personal scrubs. So. And, you know, I, I mean, I've worked in Chicago and I've worked in Colorado and I've worked in Minnesota, like major metropolitan areas around the country. And so, you know, my, my coworkers uh, all over the country like are, are doing this. It, to me, it seemed kind of like a no brainer. Um, right. But yes, it, it, it was one policy for Abbott Northwestern and something very different from United. So why, what was the reasoning why you couldn't wear them? They, they didn't have enough? Um, they couldn't fund the laundering, the, that sounds like a bad word, <laughs> the laundry bill, I'm like laundry, <laughs> they couldn't fund the laundry bill, like what, what was the reason that this was such a bad idea, like no, no, why couldn't you put them on? So what, what they said was that the CDC did not recognize scrubs as PPE or personal protective equipment, which we agree, we agree on that. Yeah. But that's not really the issue. I mean, uh, you know, a, a, a contaminated test tube is not personal protective equipment, but I don't want to bring it home with myself. Right. right. Exactly. So they said, in addition to that, um, that um, there was some logistical problems with with offering these things that everybody couldn't have them, which is fine. Uh, but given that there are, you know, piles of these things in the hospital, right. uh, it seemed reasonable to utilize them within the high contact areas, ICU, ER, that sort of thing. Certainly the COVID units, med surge and OBS and that sort of thing. So, you know, at that point, honestly, like I was at the, the point where uh, I was worried that I was going to bring this home to my family, that I was going to get myself sick and potentially my wife sick. And because we're new residents of Minnesota, we don't have anybody here to take care of our kids. If me and my wife are hospitalized, like okay. a, you know, a million other couples across the country experience. Was it just you or were other nurses wearing the hospital scrubs too sometimes? Oh, tons of, tons of nurses were wearing the okay. hospital issued scrubs. So a lot of people, even though they knew it was frowned upon, were like, we're just gonna put them on and kind of see 
how it goes. Oh, they yeah, yeah. Dozens of nurses were were wearing the hospital issued scrubs. They all got taken down to disciplinary hearings. I mean, the entire two months uh, or three months between like uh, March and May, uh -huh. our our hospital director, our, our I'm sorry, our ER director uh, Eric Johnson and our ER manager uh, Kelly Johnson spent an enormous amount of time um, during the critical moments of the outbreak of COVID nineteen disciplining and uh, meeting with and lecturing their their uh, their employees, their frontline employees about the scrubs, about wearing these scrubs. That's how they spent a significant amount of their time and energy. Um, you know, I mean, it was huge. It became a, a media story across the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul area. The city council of St. Paul passed a, a resolution demanding that United Hospital give us these damn things. I mean, it was it was a, a pretty major deal. So it wasn't, you know, just myself kind of acting alone. It was, you know, this was a healthcare story that carried, you know, through um, a, a major city in the United States for 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 months. Between your last, like your final written warning, okay, and you're yes. getting fired, what was the time span? Like days a day weeks. the final written warning i'd have to look at it but it was it, it had to be maybe a couple weeks or something like that okay so in your mind were you like it's coming any day now they're probably or were you like they're not going to do this they're not going to fire me over scrubs like this is <laughs> out of control like what what in your mind each time you went to work what what were you thinking i was i was nervous that they had created uh, a pissing match over this yeah. Right. Um, and so at that point, I, I, I started to worry about that. It, it really didn't like how minute of a request or action yeah. that this uh, this occurred, you know, th was perceived to be by me that like Alina wanted to make an example out of this, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I didn't know for sure if they were going to pull the trigger or not. Um, right. Because nobody had been fired over this at this point, right? No, like, okay. no, I don't know. If we, we still don't know if anybody has ever been fired in the history of this hospital system for such a thing. So, so anyways, then they pull you in there and they tell you because you continued to violate this and you continued to wear the scrubs, you big butthole. You're such a horrible person, Cliff. You put I know on, that. Yeah, you put on these scrubs and you're just such a violator. We're going to have to let you go for maintaining your cleanliness at your home. We're going to have to give you the boot. And you're like, what'd you say? Okay. What am you like, what are you going to okay. do? It was kind of like a gut punch, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I've, I've been a nurse for 13 years. I've never been fired. Um, and I, I, I value what I do. I know, you know, I like every other nurse, you, you know, you're honored to be entrusted with people's lives. So, um, to be fired and to have to hand my badge across the table. And then, of course, as you, you suggested, they brought a security guard there yeah. who walked me all the way out to my truck. And granted, yeah. I was a newer employee, so I was on the parking lot three blocks away. Did they make you take off the scrubs or did you get to leave in the hospital scrubs? No, I had to take off the scrubs. Oh, my Lord. Tell me that would have been so mad. Seriously? They couldn't oh, yeah. at the one pair of scrubs. I had to go back into the locker room, change into my clothes, um, empty my locker out, of course. Um, and then yes, be uh, walked all the way across, you know, three blocks of St. Paul, Minnesota with oh, the security wow. guard. Well, and then it gets better. Oh God, there's more? Well, because I got reported to the board of nursing. Oh, yes, I have heard of this. And that came from the hospital or you don't know? I, I can't say for sure, but my lawyer told me it almost certainly did. And, um, it you know, it reads like my HR file straight from Alina. So I, I think it's reasonable to conclude that, yes. You, you were trying to support everybody and stand up for everybody. And then in their eyes, it's like, Okay, you're the one that's not backing down. You're the, um, and I'm just gathering all this. You tell me if I'm wrong. You're the union steward. Um, you mm -hmm. are support, you know, you're there. You know the info for the union, which is annoying probably to them. Um, and, you know, you won't back down. You're still wearing them. It's like, 
the sooner we can get him out of here, the easier this will be for all of us. So you get fired, you have a complaint against the board of nursing. Also, you find out, um, then, so this was on, I wrote this down, May 8th, you were fired. That's um, correct. Okay. It, between May 8th and now, what has been going on? You work or you don't work? You have a new job? What's happening? So between May 8th, I mean, for one, we were already preparing for retaliatory actions as this um, kind of intensified. Uh, so we filed a whistleblower uh, lawsuit against uh, United Hospital. And, you know, I mean, it, the hospital was was moderately concerned about myself, but what they were worried about is that this was galvanizing the employees. And, you know, they're, they're, they can be nervous about one nurse, but when it's a lot of nurses, mm -hmm. that's when it becomes a problem. So they were really afraid, I think, that the, that the employees were going to start to mutiny for, for legitimate reasons. And, um, so since the firing, we filed a, a whistleblower lawsuit, which is a personal lawsuit. That's, that's something that I filed myself. Uh, the union filed a grievance and basically is, you know, we're saying that I was fired without just cause, uh, which is, I, I think we have a very strong case about that. And it goes to a state arbitrator who will decide whether the contract was broken or my labor rights as a, you know, an employee in the United States were violated, uh, that sort of thing. In the last two weeks, I received a notice from the board of nursing as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's the even board, more- The board of nursing thing you just found out about. Or yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. I wanna give you a chance to talk about the petition and what um, that means in signing the petition. Um, from what I understand, the petition is to reinstate your job at your prior employer, but do you want that? To happen is that something that you want or is it um because that's justified that i mean i i feel like that's I just for you um but I, I don't know how you want to answer that like that would be a tough one for me like i'd feel if i were you I'm trying to put myself in your shoes i would feel bitter and i would feel angry and i'd feel like you don't deserve to have me there i'm an excellent nurse i'm a great person and you don't deserve to have me there but at the same point you should have the choice to decide whether you want to work there or not. And that's, right. that's how I feel about it. What, does that make sense what I'm trying to say? It, it, it makes 100% sense. And of course, you know, uh, you know, a lot of folks are like, well, that sounds like such a toxic managerial environment uh, to begin with. And, and the way you were treated was so crappy, you know, why would you want to return to, to that place? But, you know, at some point, at some point, people like this, these these um, uh, climbers within the U.S. healthcare system that are very casual, I feel, about belittling and intimidating and targeting the frontline workers that uh, are critical to, to public health care, um, they, they have to be pushed back. And, you know, uh, to me, I, I, I'm just not ready to roll over um, and to let them have the last word on this. But yeah, it's my intent to return to, to United Hospital. Okay. Uh, the, the petition that we put out um, like a week and a half ago, we were hoping to get a thousand signatures on it over the course of a, a six week campaign leading up to my arbitration. And we've got 2000 signatures on it in a week and a half. Okay, so you're, you're going to get more. You need to get more. And I'm going to post sure. the link for the petition um, in the description of this video so that people can sign it. Now, because I do my homework here. Like, I know homework, you do. And I've looked at it. You have to put in your name, your email address, and some other information. Where does that go and who is seeing that? So, um, you know, to, to us, like, it's important for the people that are signing the petition. We want to keep them informed. Um, so, you know, we're not going to share your, your contact information with anybody, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, th that petition, every time somebody signs it, um, it will generate an automatic email to the Alina um, executive uh, okay. personnel uh, saying that another person has signed the Bring Back Cliff camp. Sign it, people. Uh, sign the petition. Um, so if you feel like 
he, he should not have lost his job and he deserves the opportunity to go back, just go in and sign the petition that you support him. Thanks for having me and I'm so happy to meet you.